Hello and welcome to SAP on Microsoft Azure. My name is Holger Prochelt and in this quick video, we want to take a closer look at the SAP ERP connector for Power Automate and, and Power Apps. So the flow looks like this. Um, we have an SAP system behind uh, a firewall, obviously. So um, no one can access the SAP system from outside. So what we've done, we've installed the on-premises data gateway, which basically exposes the information of the SAP system via reverse lookup to the power platform. So from the power platform, we'll be able to use an SAP ERP um, connector to connect via the on-premises data gateway to the SAP system. And then obviously once we have the information in Power Automate, we can also make it available in the Power Apps or, or other um, scenarios. So let's um, take a look at this specific scenario. So for this, uh, I have here um, Power Automate and I could um, now start to create a flow. But actually in this specific case, my SAP system is behind a firewall. So I cannot just access the SAP system directly from Power Automate. So in order to connect to the SAP system, what I've done is on my SAP system, I have installed the on-premises um, data gateway. So the on-premises data gateway is now um, connected to Power Automate and basically acts as a reverse proxy um, to my SAP system. The other thing that I've done is I've created a dedicated RFC user. So I, I call this PM1 RFC user. I assigned this user um, roles to call um, RFC permissions or to, to call and remote function call. So there are a few um, authorizations, profiles also required so that this user can actually um, connect um, to the SAP system. This, this user doesn't have any permissions to connect as a dialogue user to the SAP system, but um, that's uh, good enough for, for, for my scenario. So with this setup, what I can now do is I can go to Power Automate and I'll just create an instant cloud for call. We'll call it SAP ERP connection and add the manual trigger for the flow. Now, if I can click on create, then I can start with the first new step. And the first new step is calling the SAP ERP um, connector. And there are, there are multiple um, actions available. I just want to call the SAP um, function. So the first step here is now I obviously need to connect to my SAP system. So what I, I'll do is I'll just um, create a new connection. And in this connection, I'll use SAP authentication. I'll use the on-premises data gateway and I'll provide a username and password for um, my SAP system. So I'll just use this um, RFC user that I've created. I'll paste the password in here and I'll click on create. Now, what Power Automate does is, is, is it checks the connectivity to the on-premises data gateway. Right now, it does not yet connect to the SAP system. This is something that only happens now in the next step because now I'm specifying the application server host, the client, the system number, and then obviously also the SAP function module. Now, it's very important to understand that this um, application system, the SAP application system host name is the internal IP address or the internal host name. So this is not a URL or an IP address that is accessible from outside. This is really only the um, IP address that is accessible from inside um, my network. So with this information, with this um, IP address, I can switch back over to the application server host. I'll just put in this IP address. I'll put in the SAP client and the SAP system number. And now what I can do is I can actually start typing the function module name, the SAP function module name. And the cool thing is that Power Automate now does an automatic lookup of function modules um, that start with a certain terminology. So sticking to the, the product that I'll use, usually take to, to test what I can just say, I, I, I look for API, ABAPI EPM product. And let's say I just want to start with the get list functionality. So I can see there's a change, create, delete, and get detail. I'll just want to stick to the get list. And now you can see, again, Power Automate automatically fetches all the relevant um, 
properties fields that are available in the SAP system. And so I, I could fill in um, some information here. Let's just say I, I only want to have the um, top 10 rows um, as, a, as a result of my um, function call. And with this, I can just click on save. <clears throat> and I can just test this flow now here directly from Power Automate. And if I run the flow, then we should get the information back from the SAP system in a second. So the um, flow was triggered, the function call was executed successful. So here again, you see the, the information. This is the um, BAPI that we called. And if I scroll down here, then you can see here um, the header data, or actually let's let's take a look at the body down below here. Um, you can see here, I have uh, all these different products coming back from the SAP system. Now, obviously what I could do is I could, um, since this is now a JSON format, I, I could take this body, I could parse this JSON format and then continue with this information in my Power Automate flow. So I hope this quick video gave you an idea of what you can do with the SAP ERP connector, how you can use the on-premises data gateway to connect via Power Automate to your SAP system, how you can look up and browse available BAPIs and um, remote function um, calls in the SAP system, and yeah, how to get started. So there's a lot of additional documentation obviously available. There's an introductional blog post that talks about the SAP ERP connector. There's also the documentation for the SAP ERP connector. So it's, it's fairly easy um, to get started. With this, thank you very much for um, watching. Make sure to subscribe.